T2 Tale Revisited. Hi, I'm Ken Ray, welcoming you to checklist number 203, brought to you by Secure Mac. On today's show, a reason to feel good about your Mac, a new reason to worry about your Mac, and things you can do to keep yourself safe. Holy cow, that last one sounds like a checklist. On this edition of The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. feel good about your choice of computer assuming you use a mac which listening to the checklist by secure mac i assume you do assuming you use a mac a recent survey shows businesses concerned with security prefer the mac to other computing platforms jamf is a company that manages apple hardware for medium and large businesses the site apple must says jamf commissioned a study recently on the state of enterprise Mac security. For organizations that use Macs as well as non-Macs, 77% see the Mac as more secure out of the box. Not that buying a Mac is all you have to do. Apple Must says about half of the IT enterprise security teams remain concerned about unknown threats and are prioritizing future spending on security software. Because sure... Mac usage is also going up at work, or at work from home, I suppose. According to the survey, 74% of organizations that are mostly Macs say they're adding more Macs over the next 12 months. Perhaps more telling, for organizations that are mostly non-Macs, 65% of those also expect to add more Macs over the next year. And while some of that will be driven by employee choice, a lot of it has to do with how easy the devices are to maintain. And again, we look to security. First, there's that stat I threw at you before that 77% of mixed platform organizations see the Mac as the most secure device out of the box. Additionally, Apple Must says 79% of Mac users say its perceived security reputation positively affects their purchase decisions. Same goes for the orgs that skew away from the Mac. 57% of organizations with fewer Macs than non-Macs say Apple's security reputation positively impacts their purchase decision. And finally, here's one that I know would please a lot of people I know. Apple Musk says Mac users roll out OS security patches 30% faster than non-Macs. The survey says it takes Mac users about four days on average to roll out OS security patches. Pretty good about your computing platform, huh? Well, don't get too cocky. Following up on a story we covered here last week, Objective C's Patrick Wardle joined us to more or less demystify the T2 vulnerability found in, well, Max with Apple's T2 chip. It's not a great look since the T2 is the security guard for relatively recent Max. It sort of acts like the bouncer making sure that things that shouldn't gain control of your Mac don't gain control of your Mac. Now, if you want a more in-depth description, may I suggest the checklist or the checklist? You can listen to last week's interview with Patrick, or you can read the write-up of that interview and some issues around it at securemac.com slash checklist. Go there, then look for episode 202, the T2 Vulnerability with Patrick Wardle. So why are we bringing that up again this week? Well, I asked Patrick last week whether there was a like a specially crafted or maliciously crafted connector that could thwart the T2 without user intervention. He said no, that a bad actor would have to take control of a thing attached to the target Mac. In other words, just plugging in a cord wouldn't do it. 
the cord would have to connect to the target Mac and another machine that would deliver the troublesome exploit. I felt a little bit silly having asked that question. Turns out, though, I wasn't completely wrong. I was just early. To take advantage of the target machine, you still have to have another machine connected to it, but taking control has apparently gotten easier. Apple Insider ran a piece Tuesday saying that the same folks who found the exploit have gotten hold of a custom USB-C cable that can jailbreak the T2 chip in a MacBook Pro. Earlier in October, Apple Insider says the Check Rain team developed the unfixable vulnerability that essentially allows an attacker to jailbreak the T2 security chip in a Mac. Once they do, all types of malicious attacks can be carried out on an affected macOS device. Now, the team has demoed a real-world attack that takes advantage of a technique similar to one leveraged by specialized USB-C cables used internally by Apple for debugging. Similar because it's reverse-engineered from cables used by Apple at various levels for troubleshooting machines. These cables have leaked from Cupertino and Apple Retail in the past, according to Apple Insider. Now a security researcher has created an effective clone of that cable that, combined with the Check Rain team's exploits, makes it possible to carry out this attack. Now the target Mac still has to go into DFU mode, or Device Firmware Update mode. But this clone cable, once it's plugged in, it'll put that machine it's plugged into straight into DFU leaving it open for exploit. The bad news. Check Rain says a version of this cable will soon be available for sale. Yay! The good news, it's still a hassle to implement. People targeting the Mac still need physical access to that Mac. Most of us aren't going places these days. Strangers near our technology is pretty uncommon thanks to COVID-19. You've also got to be pretty special for this to be an issue. Not that you're not special in your own way, but we're probably talking works for a major corporation special or is a political dissident special. As Apple Insider puts it, the attack requires direct physical access to a Mac, which rules out most types of scenarios for the average user. However... Users who may find themselves targeted by nation-states or cybercriminals should ensure that they keep their Mac safe by maintaining physical security of the device. Woo! The Checklist presents an actual checklist in a moment. But first, a word about MacScan 3 from Secure Mac. Chances are you're doing more with your computer today than you were just a few months ago because you're working from home and the kids are schooling from home. Not saying anything you're doing is particularly risky. I will say, though, now would be a particularly difficult time to be without a working machine. You need a good anti-malware solution. One like MacScan 3. MacScan 3 is a great defense against malicious software attacks aimed at your Mac. It's developed by Secure Mac, trusted names in computer security and developers of exceptional security software for the Mac for over 20 years. MacScan 3 detects and removes Mac malware, catches key loggers, removes tracking cookies, and provides full range or targeted scanning all without crowding up your hard drive or slowing down your machine. Sign up for a free 30-day trial today at securemac.com slash macscan. Then once you decide to buy, buy for less. You can take a little off the subscription to MacScan 3 with offer code CHECKLIST. Try it out first, watch it kick those tracking cookies to the curb, then when you're ready to buy, buy for less with offer code CHECKLIST at securemac.com slash MacScan. 
well, if there's one thing that we like on the checklist, it is a good checklist. Came across a good one last week as part of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Every individual should own their role in protecting their information and securing their systems and devices, says the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Now, here's something that makes me happy. This is all stuff that we have talked about here. And it's all stuff that all of us can do, starting with passwords, which really shouldn't be single words. Item one, make a long, unique passphrase. Length trumps complexity, says the organization. A strong passphrase is a sentence that is at least 12 characters long. Focus on positive sentences or phrases that you like to think about and are easy to remember. This makes perfect sense. We've all done the too clever by half thing before. You make up something super sneaky that nobody would ever guess, including you when you have a brain issue. If you're not going to use a password manager, which really is a better solution, but if you're not going to use a password manager, at the very least, make a long, unique passphrase. Make it something that's not easy to guess, but something that you won't forget. Item two, passphrases aren't enough. When I didn't just say make it, yes, they did. Use two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication like biometrics, security keys, or a unique one-time code through an app on your mobile device whenever it's offered. And I'll add, if it is not offered, ask why it's not offered. Ask when it will be offered. Two-factor authentication. We did a whole show on it last year. 2FA101. That was checklist number 139. Online at securemac.com slash checklist. Item three. When in doubt, throw it out. Links in email, tweets, texts, posts, social media messages, and online advertising are the easiest way for bad guys to get your sensitive data, NCSA says. Be wary of clicking on links or downloading anything that comes from a stranger or that you were not expecting. Then they double down on that, saying essentially, just don't trust links. Item four, keep a clean machine. I'm not sure why they say it that way. What they mean is stay on top of your updates. Quoting NCSA, keep all software on internet connected devices, including personal computers, smartphones, and tablets, current to reduce risk of infection from ransomware and malware. Configure your devices to automatically update or to notify you when an update is available. Item five, back it up. Protect your valuable work, music, photos, and other digital information by making an electronic copy and storing it safely. This advice goes all the way back to the very beginning of the checklist. NCSA says if you have a copy of your data and your device falls victim to ransomware or other cyber threats, you'll be able to restore the data from a backup. They go on to advise that people use the 3 two, one rule as a guide to backing up your data. The rule is keep at least three copies of your data and store two backup copies on different storage media with one located off-site. Item 6. Own your online presence. Every time you sign up for a new account, download a new app, or get a new device, Immediately configure the privacy and security settings to your comfort level for information sharing. Regularly check these settings at least once a year to make sure that they are still configured to your comfort. That's a really difficult one. There's a new app you want to try, a new program you just downloaded. The reason you did it was because you want to hurry up and do the thing that the program does. You don't want to spend forever reading privacy statements and checking settings and stuff. It's really important to do it right away, though, because chances are 
you're not going to remember to go back and do it later. Item 7. Share with care. Think before posting about yourself and others online, they advise. Consider what a post reveals, who might see it, and how it might affect you or others. Consider creating an alternate persona that you use for online profiles to limit how much of your own personal information you share. And finally, item eight, get savvy about Wi-Fi hotspots. Public wireless networks and hotspots are not secure, which means that anyone could potentially see what you're doing on your laptop or smartphone while you're connected to them. Limit what you do on public Wi-Fi and avoid logging into key accounts like email and financial services. Consider using a virtual private network or VPN or a personal mobile hotspot if you need a more secure connection. Personally, I'm a big fan of both of those when I'm at a coffee shop or something, which, of course, I haven't done for months because of COVID-19. But in the before times, and hopefully in times to come, I prefer my phone for stuff that I have to look up and just keeping my Mac offline. If I have to go online, I do have a VPN that I trust. Just logging into the free Wi-Fi at the coffee hut, you might as well just start shouting out your credit card number. Okay, not quite, but seriously, it's not safe. Here's what's great, by the way, about a list like this. You don't have to do it all at once. You can build up to it. I'm saying that for you if this is stuff you're not doing, and I'm saying it for anybody with whom you share this list. We'll have a link to these tips in the notes for this show. Go over this stuff with friends or family members, but especially for older, less tech-savvy people, maybe go over it one at a time. If you try to hit people with all this stuff at once, chances are they're going to just glaze over or freak out. They might feel lectured, which could lead them to doing none of the things that we're talking about. It's okay to take it one step at a time, because with every step, that friend or family member is growing a bit more safe. If you're looking for more security news and how-tos, the place to look is securemac.com slash checklist. There you'll find notes for this show, for the last show we did, all the way back to the very first show ever. And you can also read along right there. There are notes for every show that we've done. It all starts in one place, securemac dot com slash checklist if you have a question you would like to ask or a topic you would like to hear us hit our email address is checklist at securemac.com that address again is checklist at securemac.com and if you can't remember that please do remember this you're listening to the checklist brought to you by secure mac and we'll talk to you next week (laughs) 